This is a one litre 2014 VW up MPI. I think that stands for multi point injection, something like that. Um, it's just, I'm pretty sure this is going to be the same for the Skoda City Go or the Seat MI. Pretty sure they're all the same car. And VW probably fitted these engines to loads of other makes and models as well. A few interesting things about this. To change this belt, you want to buy a kit that's got these parts in as well. Get these kits off eBay or Amazon. But I couldn't find a, another video on it apart from one bloke showing that it's really difficult to fit these. And in the end, if you take this cover off, this cover, this is flat bladed here or slotted for this and then these two prongs go in the pulley for the water pump, which is belt driven off a tiny little belt in the back here. But you cannot, or it is a real struggle to get it in between that hose and where it's got to go. It's also impossible to see, once you put this in, whether it lines up. So in the end, I ended up cutting a couple of little slots there and with a cutting desk tuck couple of mil off these um, teeth makes no difference apart from your life a lot easier getting that tool in at first you think the way the main dealer manual shows it is lock up these cams and then slacken these bolts off onto the um, pulleys which if anyone's ever done an old Ford ZTEC engine or anything like that you can lock the cams up undo the bolts here these free wheel makes putting the belt on really easy and you just lock them back down because the cams are locked up anyway but you can't do that with this the manual calls for undoing these no idea why because these pulleys have got timing marks uh, you can just see them there two little dots to each other and they're not circular these pulleys are triangular shaped, so they must be timed to each other. They can, that cannot be changed at all. The tensioner, this is the one I took off a few days ago, so rusted up a bit, but the tensioner sits like that, and this is sprung, and you set it so that the pin and the slot line up, which actually is right in the middle of its travel. So this tensioner is constantly moving like that to account for these pulleys being triangular shaped. So unlike an ordinary tensioner where you tension it and lock it down, this is all the time chattering like that. So I didn't really, and you get this tool as well. This, the cheap plastic one, you can see it's a bit worn there, is does take quite a bit of force to push in and these teeth or arrows line up with the marks on the pulley only going one way because those pulleys are egg shaped you cannot get it in any other way but it took quite a bit of force to actually push that in you can see it's um, wore it a little bit I think the plastic moulding is just a bit crap but in the end I never undid these bolts there was literally no point whatsoever as far as I could see, because they've got to go back exactly where they are. You know, you can't, when, you've, when you start and when you finish, this has got to fit in. So if you freewheel these, it, it doesn't achieve anything. So that was at the uh, top of the engine. Oh, in a second you'll see when it's uh, lifted up. To get this out, there's a few videos that are of cars that are left hand drive and this is on the other side so they take this out really easily but uh, to get this out you've got to drop it through the bottom I found this this engine mount piece this comes straight off but this engine mount here that's got to be dropped through the bottom underneath now um, The um, take the wheel off, take this uh, wheel arch lining out, and then you can 
if yours has got a cover, take the cover off the tensioner here. Um, and this is not automatic. This is not an auto tensioner. It's just an eccentric um, setup inside, put an Allen key in, and it just sits at the sort of dwell angle. So you just slacken it off slightly and it'll come away. You can take this belt off. Getting the nut off, there's the crank nut there. Now I found that this was just a cheap laser set, I think. The only socket I could get to fit was this one. I think it's a 20, yeah, it's a 21. It's a 21 and it's like a, yeah, just the edges are rounded. And you can see the nut there. But yeah, six point or anything wouldn't do it. It's, it had to be that one. It's, um, it's not even like a 12 point. It's a, it's a weird, I think laser advertise it as like a VAG set or whatever. Anyway, once all that's off, you need to put the um, crank locking pin in. And that is worth putting in. You've got to take out, there's the drive shaft. You've got to take out that nut there, that bolt. But this then doesn't go in. Take the gearbox mounted off here and you can push this on the sump to try and get that in. Now, I've seen a video where somebody pushed it in, you know, pushed the engine in and put this in and I still couldn't get it to go. In the end, you can see there, I just took a flat disc to it and just tapered it slightly, made absolutely no difference to how it works, but it goes in so much easier. You know, you've got to try and push that as hard as you can and put that in at the same time. Um, once it's locked up, it's fine. You can turn the engine still one way, but not the other. It just hits the pin. Um, and then to drop this out, this cover that I was saying, like I said, it's got to drop out the bottom. You undo the um, alternator so that you can push that out of the way, or you undo it from the top, sorry, up here. And that will then lean out the way. But take this bracket off here, because that engine mount will not drop through here unless you've taken these two splines out and it's the bracket that holds on the tensioner for the uh, auxiliary belt just make sure you do that and then you can sort of push the engine up and down or whatever a little bit to um, free that up and get that out um, that's the tip I'll give there when when you put the belt on you'll find because you haven't, if you don't uh, undo those centre bolts, but I mean, the manufacturer says to, on the um, cams, it was quite difficult to get the belt on, but what I found was you could turn the engine back on itself, which freed up a bit of slack to get it on, and then when you put it around the crank pulley, you could pull the crank pulley back hard against the stop to feed the belt on. Um, and the crank sprocket behind there is keyed loads of engines now they seem to be just held on with bolt pressure which means that the the crank sprocket can just free spin but once you get this off the crank sprocket behind is actually keyed to the crankshaft so you can turn the sprocket and it will turn the crank which is um nice and the other thing i'd say is i mean i ended up buying these the traditional ones that you see um, I'll get one out in a second of uh, these torques and splines you'll need both of these you, this engine bay is so tight by the time you've got you know these on there is just no space in here whatsoever so I would say get these sets that's a 6727 and that is a 6725 made a world of difference getting them off sort of thing if you got these style sets literally a waste of time I and mean, this is a health set it's been really good but there's another set there they just don't fit there's no space in that engine bay whatsoever uh, this is a set i think that came from i think it's laser that these sockets came on barely used it but um, seemed to fit that crank but here's the belt that took off and car's done 88,000 miles never been changed before um, 
the, well, it's eight years old. I think the recommendation is every five, but absolutely nothing wrong with it whatsoever. The only thing I expect would happen is, well, the belt might snap. I mean, they recommend every five years, but if you look online, there's a debate that on, in Europe, it just says inspect after 150,000 kilometers or something. But I suspect you'll probably find the tensioner or uh, one of the idlers would fail and take it off. But yeah, hope this helps. Um, that's all I can say.